are we talking about? Oh, just I'll just interview. It's fine. <laughs> we are live. Okay, in this video, I'm going to chat to Kevin Mackay from Glasgow Underground. Let's jump into it. Hi, Kev. How are you? How are you? How's it going? How's your BMC? Why are you here? And uh, how's life? I, I'm very well. Um, I'm here to do a couple of panels. I did one on a and and I'm doing one about sampling. Uh, people want to know about uh, how like, the Milo samples I worked on are, and all the records on Glasgow Underground, how they are getting put together. So I'm doing that and it's lovely, great weather, having a great time. And uh, I saw the panel this morning on You've Made Your Music, What Next? That's a big thing we talk about on, these on our Data Transmission YouTube channel. Yeah. Uh, you chatted, yeah, chatted a lot about building your brand as a DJ. Yeah, kind of. Just like, how do you get labels interested? Is it should you set up your own label? Should you should you approach another label? It seemed like the general consensus was you need a better profile before you set up your own label. So, if you're just starting out, then you know, kept tips for kind of presenting your music best to labels, getting other key supporters involved, DJs. If it's a dance track, club track, then getting key DJs involved, getting some quotes from them, getting stuff that you can take to a label doing a bit of the ground research work for a label so that when you're taking it to a label, they, they can see that, that this track's got potential because, you know, people are into it, such and such is playing it, that kind of thing. So. And um, so let's talk about that. I, I really want to talk about labels with you. Obviously, you've run Glasgow Underground for a, a long time. And you, uh, you, uh, for those that don't know Kevin, he created all the, the Milo album the um, and, and a whole lot more across his career. Um, congrats, firstly, that's incredible. Uh, the album last year you put out was amazing. I wanted to chat to you then, but we didn't have the space. But um, so yes, very well done. Thank you very much. Um, let's and let's talk about running a label. I mean, is it right for everybody? Sh um, should you? Uh, when should you start a label as a DJ? And do you think do you think people trying to jump into starting labels when they probably should just be signing tracks to, to other labels to grow their brand and grow their grow their kind of profile first? Yeah, I mean, I think the like. If, you, if you're looking at an obvious person who should have his own label, then look what, what Fisher did. Have a big track on Dirty Bird. The track absolutely blows up across the world. And then from then on in, you just don't need a label. You are bigger than almost every single label out there. So set up your own label and make more of the money come into to yourself. Because even the big, you know, the big labels are going to take a really chunky percentage of that money. Be, like the, the online shops are going to take a chunky percentage. Then a distributor is going to take a smaller percentage. But and then it goes to a big label. They're going to take an even bigger percentage. So if you've got that, if you've got that kind of ability to reach people with your profile, then have your own label. If you don't, then I think you are going to need uh, you are going to need a label. Even for him though, like if you've got that size, do you even need a label at all and just distribute it all yourself on your just as your own? Yeah, I mean there is that model for. I mean, Innervisions use that for their vinyl stuff. You know, they don't have. You cannot. You can't buy Innervisions from a shop. You want to go it. You get. It, you want it, Innervisions twelve inch. You get it from their website. And I think that's just because of how little money comes back from vinyl when it goes through the process of being in a shop to a distributor to back to the label. Um, but yeah, I, I, I still think you need, you know, everyone looks at, in dance music, everyone looks at Beatport, you know, it's probably an 80-20 split between Beatport, Track Source and the rest. So, you know, I think everyone looks at these stalls, you kind of need to be present on those stalls, so, yeah. Do you still make more money from Beatport, Track Source than you do kind of a streaming model? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, I still think, I mean... My label's focused on selling records to DJs, so that's, I mean, you know, I was speaking with a, a label in Australia that, that, you know, sometimes license our stuff, and I think their Beatport sales are like 2% of their business, 1% of their business, but I, I'm a DJ at heart, I care about um, buying, re I care about records that work in kind of in clubs and, and work on a quite, quite a bit quite a big level and so I want to sell those records to other DJs and so yeah I mean while um, people, while DJs are still one of the few people left buying actual downloads then yeah it, that's and do you think um, if you're if you're a small artist and you've literally just started is starting a label at the same time as starting your artist career wise or should you then be spreading those trying to get some you know brand recognition kind of profile first yeah, I mean, if you can't get anyone to put your records out, if you can't get a label, but you can get a label deal with a distributor, then that at least gets it accomplishes the like the it accomplishes the first goal, which is like get your music out there, get get your you know if you want to have 
you can get a, you know if you've got a link aggregator or whatever you do so that you can be like shouting about well this is where you get my music you can listen on Spotify you can buy on Beatport you can buy on TrackSource you know at least that accomplishes that goal but to be it it would be an unusual situation that an artist can't get signed but could get a label deal so I'm just thinking like if you're if you're so, you're so tiny that you you've got records but you you Starting a label just seems like you're tiny and your label will be tiny and therefore your reach will be pretty tiny. But if you're if you're if you sign those to even speak a little bit bigger label, then it, your reach is bigger. You know, yeah, you're totally right. I mean, that was the basis of that. That was kind of the the um, how the panel sort of how that kind of went today where it's like if you want to start a label that's cool but you need to have a profile so like if you haven't got any profile then probably starting a label is a bad idea Def work to get profile first I think uh, yeah okay and then um, just sort of uh, in that panel you touched on sending demos to labels uh, you made some very interesting points about kind of getting it right and just trying to getting the emails right uh, I know I know from I know from a lot of people still, that's a big question for us, and it's a big question that I literally get asked all the time. Um, and I don't, I don't really understand why it's so hard. I don't know. Um, read how to win friends and, and influence people. <laughs> that's a great uh, it's a fantastic book. And learn, you know, make sure your communication's good. No one likes, to, no one likes a, a, a big like, list where you feel like you've just been mailed as part of like, a group thing. If you're, f if you're a fan of Glasgow Underground, then le learn about the, you know, well, you should know about the label. If you're just using Glasgow Underground because you want to be famous, then please, you know, it's probably not, like, don't bother. <laughs> like, um, but if you're a fan of the label, then you know, express that. Like, you know, write a personal email, talk about, you know, and talk about your music, talk about the people that are, you know, that are playing your music. If you haven't got anyone playing your music, then work on that. Even if it's local DJs, even if it's just like, this is the guy at my student union, here's a short clip of him playing it and the place going nuts. If I see 300 people that don't know a track going nuts to a track, I'm like, well, I've, you know, I've got to find out a bit more about this artist. So it doesn't need to be like, oh, here's Hotson to here's Hotson to 82, here's Dennis Sota. It doesn't need to be like household names. It just, you know, it can be, it can be anywhere. But like, I mean, people engaging to a record is people engaging to a record. A you know? 100%, yeah. And if 300 people are going nuts to an unknown record, then that again in my mind it's like well what what could a hundred that you know a thousand people do and what ten thousand people do because if it's that good then a hundred percent if you see that that's if you see people doing that having that reaction the record should definitely be out on beatport djs other djs are going to want to have their crowds ha experiencing that kind of like um emotion and i want i want to say as a label as a purely as a from the business point of view of the label i want to sell djs that record and um, uh, you mentioned that we mentioned in the panel that there was about profile and whether you ch whether you're signing records on how the music is or whether you actually look at the profile of an artist is that important to you or? I 100 not important to me. I'm purely interested in the music. I would um, I would sign music from unfashionable artists. I I, I literally do not care. <laughs> so. <laughs> Yeah, like I told you earlier, we uh, we uh, we just signed one from this, a kid called Blue Leopard who literally sent us a lovely email, like, actually a lovely email, and I'll probably put it up on the line on the on the on this video, and uh, had no profile, no presence, no in, not even an Instagram, no Facebook, just an amazing EP, and we're like, right, look, we're putting this out, it's incredible. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong, I think those things are important as uh, to work with an artist long term. Um, but if someone's got the wrong type of profile, that doesn't bother me. If someone's just starting out and they've got a terrible name or they're not doing a, they've not got great press shots, then that's stuff you can change. So, you know, that, that's easy to do. But I, I, I mean, I might go and look at someone's profile, but the only one I'm interested in signing it. I don't sort of think, oh, I'm not sure about this. I'll see what their socials are like. I'm like, not into the music. Don't care what the socials are like. Don't care. The record's not good enough for me. So um, I, I, I really like having, you know, I really like seeing DJs responding and buying our tracks. And um, I, the only way that that really works for me is if I'm 100% into it. I would play this record out. And so I can share it and be excited about it and say, other DJs, you should play this out too because it's the kind of thing that is going to feature in my sets. So... And uh, finally, I just want to talk about someone that's had a career in music, and I, I really do emphasise career, that people just, these days, are trying to do things too quickly, yeah. and they don't think that, don't consider that this is a career now. Um, what are your biggest tips for actually having a career in music? Um, I, I've been doing this 25, 26 years now, so yeah, I think the 
the biggest thing you have to do is be yourself because you can pretend to be someone else and you might get signed, but you can't, it's very difficult to pretend to be someone else for the rest of your career in music. The easiest thing to do is to be yourself and come to terms with that. You know, I've got friends who are, make amazing tech house bangers, but they are, they just, they want to be cool. They want to be on Resident Advisor and that's just, those two are, like mutually ex incompatible and Te tech house bangers on resident advisor pro probably don't happen anyway but you know and so make peace with who you are if you're a musician and a, 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 an artist like make peace with what you are good at and what comes out of you when you write and and then go for it you know there's like and, and commit 100 percent to what you are and don't and you know then and if it, if it doesn't happen for you, then I'm sorry. Some people aren't meant to have a career. But at least then you know you've done, you've got, you've thought this is me, and you've committed to it 100%, and you found out. So, okay. Uh, finally, let, uh, let's have a quick lightning round. Okay. Ready? Lightning round. Lightning round. Lightning round. Uh, cat or dog? Dog. Tea or coffee? Tea. SoundCloud or Spotify? Spotify. Uh, so where, uh, what's coming up for you this year? Um, I've made an album called No Samples Were Harmed in the Making of This Record. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, I think that sampling is dying and it, it, because people aren't really able to sample records anymore. The minute a record gets any heat, it gets taken off the internet by the audio <laughs> detection. Yeah, and I think it's terrible. And I think sampling is a key part of dance music. And I think all through since the 70s producers have been able to steal things and take things and remake things and now is now it's all controlled by big brother and i i think it's terrible but the one thing you can do is do cover versions and so i'm free to go and make as many cover versions as i want so I, this is something that i'm free to do and i can do it and push it and shout about it and until the until the world of sampling gets sorted out that I can do stuff I can sample and I'm not going to get my record my records not going to get lost in paperwork for six months 12 months then and this is the first one I'm doing I, I have thought about that how is content ID killing sampling I think it is 100% I mean it's not going to stop people doing it but it it does limit it's like it, it's not quite a straight jacket, but there is something happening to people where records don't get that natural development because the minute it's on YouTube, it's gone and, uh, you know. Incredible. And um, where can we find you if we want to find you online? I'm at, at Glasgow on the ground or at Kevin McKay on Instagram. Thank you very much for joining me. Uh, thanks, dude. Thanks, man. That was fun.